Hello guys, welcome back to Ranjiteya Pathology YouTube channel. So this video is for postgraduate residents of pathology. So in this channel, I'll have both videos for undergraduates as well as for postgraduates and I'll put them in the playlist so that you can watch them. And I'll make sure in a week at least there are a couple of videos for new videos for both undergraduates and postgraduates. If you're first time this channel, hit the subscribe button and let's learn the beauty of pink and blue in the best possible way. Now I'm going to show you a digital slide. This is from the archives of pathology from PathoCups. So this is an ovarian mass, if you can see here, this is the most low power of the scanner view here. What I can describe here is an, it's a mass where I have predominantly cystic architecture and a little bit of solid areas here and there, right? That's how I'm going to describe them on a lower power. But when you go to higher power, pattern recognition is very, very important for differential diagnosis of almost every tumor and also for ovarian tumor, right? Let me zoom out. And when I zoom out slowly, I will talk about the pattern recognition and how to identify that pattern and also how to diagnose them, right? Okay. Now, I am going to the cystic mass. The cystic areas are predominantly lined by a single layer of epithelium, at least in this power, with an empty space. There is no content of cysts. It is predominantly an empty space which is seen here. Fine. When you go a little bit down, I can see these areas where I do see a tiny cyst and a little bit of clustered glandular appearance. So I call this pattern a tubulocystic pattern. So when do I differentiate something as tubule? And when do we call something as gland? Because these are two different terminologies, two different patterns for us, right? Now, I'll try to explain you what does a tubule mean and what does a gland mean. And obviously, then we'll go into the depths of understanding it, right? So, gland versus tubule. I call something as a tubular gland when the gland is having an elongated tubular structure, right? That's when I call something as a tubular gland. So, on a cut surface, generally a tubular gland is not exactly round. It will be a bit elongated, right? So, when you have an elongated thing like this, I use the term tubule, fine. Right? It's like a glandular architecture only, but it's a bit elongated. I call them a tubule or a tubular gland. That's when I use the term tubular gland, right? Now, with this information, let's go to the image. I'll zoom this particularly for you. Look at this part. Is it a gland or an elongated tubule? It's an elongated tubular gland. That's why I call them tubule. You must have appreciated that in this breast biopsies, especially when you go to Bloom-Richardson classification, right? So you have tubular, and I also have cystic areas here, right? I have cystic areas and the tubular cystic pattern, fine. And in this cyst, if you look at this, can I call this inside the cyst? Maybe I'll draw it for you guys for ease and convenience. Can I call this a papillary projection? Look at this. There's a papillary projection in the cyst, right? So it's have a cystic area with papillary projections inside the cyst and tubular areas as well, right? So I have multiple patterns here. Let me lame them out tubulocystic pattern predominantly and little bit of papillary areas in between the cystic architecture. So when you have an ovarian mass with tubulocystic pattern, solid pattern, papillary pattern, one of the few differential diagnoses is clear cell carcinoma and the other one might be a yolk sac tumor. But as an adult, yolk sac tumor is very, very unlikely because yolk sac tumor also has multiple patterns. When we come to yolk sac tumor discussion, I'll definitely name them out, right? Now let's come back to this. So if you look at this part, I'll go to the cellular architecture now. We look at the tubular areas only first and then we'll go to the other areas. If you look at this part, if I zoom this out, what I'm seeing is clearly cells with a very abundant clear cytoplasm. That's one of the important points for me here. Not just clear cytoplasm, let me zoom out. And few areas, if you can see, there's a little bit of pinkish cytoplasm as well, right? Yes, I'm sure you can appreciate them, right? And wait, I have one more classical finding here. Let me point that out, okay? Look at this part. See, if you look at this part, or yeah, look at this part. If you look at this part, what's happening to the nucleus is very classical. Generally, it's a low cuboidal epithelium. That's what we saw in the tubular part, right? If you look at this part, the nucleus is kind of protruding into the cystic place, right? In this papillae, if you look, especially, let me mark it for you guys so it becomes easier for you. Look at this. It's kind of protruding inside into the cystic space. Maybe look at this part. It's protruding inside, right? It, it, you might not see them in every cell, but yes, there are few places where the nucleus is jutting outside or it's in the terminal end of the cytoplasm. It's not in the base like any cuboidal or columnar ethylene. It's coming out to the center. We call this perfect. I can hear some of you say, we call this an hobnail appearance, right? I will draw an hobnail so that it's easy for you to compare. I have a gland like this. Normally, a cuboidal or columnar epithelium will have nucleus here. And hobnail thing will have a nucleus here, right? So when you have a nucleus protruding to the center of the cyst or the gland or the tubule, I call it a hobnail. You must have appreciated hobnail in lung pneumocyte. 
You must have seen them easily in the apocrine change in the breast biopsies, right? That's in Hobnail. And in this condition, if you look at the Hobnail nuclei, they are a bit more hyperchromatic. That's also a very, very characteristic finding here, right? So putting all the findings to the, let, let me um, name them. It's a tubulocystic pattern predominantly, little bit of papillary areas, clear cytoplasm, somewhere I have eosinophilic cytoplasm, and there's a Hobnailing. I want you guys to comment on the right diagnosis below. And if possible, also tell me what IHC you will do for this case. See you soon in the next video. Till then, bye-bye from Dr. Anjit. Bye-bye.